this is Andy Perua for ID Boxing. I'm joined by Joshua Boatzi here in Abu Dhabi. Joshua, firstly, how is life? Not too bad. <laughs> I'm alive, Frank. No, no. Yeah, I'm cool, man. Everything's all right. Um, just came to Abu Dhabi, um, do a bit of, of work, but as everyone would know, it would be to watch the winner here, you know? Not the winner, but just two good light heavies fighting. So um, it's nice to be here and watch it rather than having opinions based on what the TV tells you. Before we come on to that, now you've just said to Frank Smith, I'm alive. Now I'm sure people will be wondering what that is. Can you just tell everybody about the eventful morning you had out here? Yeah, honestly, I was laughing when I said it to Frank, but something serious happened this morning. Um, we were on the, it wasn't a quad bike, what's it called? No, the little buggies. No, it wasn't, I would have told the driver to stop. But I was driving, I was on the, um, the buggy this morning. Uh, myself, Walker and Dan at the back. Um, maybe they might explain it better, but we literally, literally rode a few times and then I came out and they came out too. But I've kind of paraphrased it, but as I say, if you get them, they might explain it a bit more. But I'm very, 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 very thankful to be here today and for them as well because it, like, we was having fun, but a fun incident turned into what could have been a terrible accident. So I am grateful to be here. I mean, thankfully, Josh, obviously yourself, Darren and, and videographer were OK uh, for yeah. all of that. So here we are, as you mentioned, Bivol Ramirez, I'm sure you'll be keeping that close eye on it. As you said, what are your thoughts, though? What do you expect to happen? Um, I think Ramirez, big southpaw, volume puncher. Bivol is just operated at this weight and, and in these kind of fights a lot more and a lot longer. So it'll be interesting to see. Maybe Ramirez might out-hustle him. So it'll be very interesting to see, but um, that's why we're here. That's why you're here too. So I, I, we'll, we'll find out on Saturday night. You know, somebody who in the past has said to me, you know, you kind of go there to watch fighters to get an understanding of what they're like in the ring. This is obviously a unique experience almost, but you are at that level now, waiting for your own crack. How much of a better understanding do you feel you will have of a winner being able to watch them in person? I mean, you'd almost get more just because you've seen them in person, but the goal and what I want and wanting to fight for a belt hasn't changed or isn't going to change more after today. It's just that I know that I'm going to be here and I'm going to see it live rather than watching it on TV and being crowded by, being clouded by, you know, what the commentators are saying. So that's the only difference, really. Who do you favour in this fight? Obviously, Dimitri Bivols has that brilliant win against Canelo Alvarez most recently back in May. Is he the man who you expect to come out on top? I mean... Like I said, volume punch up against someone that's, you know, operated at this weight for a long time. It'll be interesting to see. Um, but that's why you're here and that's why I'm here. Uh, me, with stuff like this, I don't sit here and call fights, I think. <laughs> Just wait for it to happen. That's the approach that I take. But um, it'll be very interesting to see. Yeah, it'll be an interesting one. Josh, how far off do you feel you are from announcing your next fight? Because we've obviously seen you call for a variety of different, you know, World level British fighters, the yard fight, the Callum Smith fight's been mentioned, and obviously, you look at that world scene, you've been calling for those as well. How far off do you feel you are from actually securing one of those names? In terms of securing it, no one could ever say that. I mean, you can't force someone to fight you. So, I'm as far off as someone agreeing to do it, then we can make it happen. It's really that simple. It's not to say, oh, I want to fight this guy um, and it's going to happen in the next two months. No, the guy has to accept it teams have to agree so it's just my team now just got to get me a good fight so it's a waiting game but it's it's a game where I have to stay ready while I'm waiting so that's what that's what it is yeah Josh one thing that kind of people have noticed most recently in a few in only just a few interviews that you've done is that you've started to call for certain fights I was interviewed asked about Anthony Yard and he said you want to him same with Callum Smith what's changed in your approach because I remember interviewing you back when you was just starting out in the pro ranks and you was never like that up until most recently. What's changed in you to want to be able to start calling people out now? Just because I haven't been a pro for a year or two. Back then you just turn over. So now there's more experience. I've done the 12 rounds, the 11s. I've been in hard fights, I would say. I've had fights where it was going my way, then it changed, but I still had to pull, pull it out of the bag. I've had fights where it's, it's been competitive every round, so it's just the experience is there a bit more now, so I'm like, okay, I feel a bit more ready, so if these guys do want to fight, they'll always know I'm available, yeah. 
Do you feel like the approach of starting to call out certain names lands you in a better position to try and kind of get it so they know that you want them? That's just like what we're in, social media, people talking this, doing this. If you do something rubbish or something stupid, you probably get more attraction and, you know, people, there's more interest, do you know what I mean? But it's never been my style to, like, do stuff like that for the attention or whatever. But I guess sometimes you have to do something to get the attention of whoever it is that you want to fight. So whether that's saying, look, I want to fight John tomorrow or next year or whatever it is, then I get that too. So, um... It's not specific names. I'm just saying to these guys, I want to fight. We know the Callum Smith fight, Callum Smith fight has been mentioned by Matrim by Eddie to me as well. Have you got any kind of understanding whereabouts those talks landed? No understanding. Not a single one. Who would you rather fight, if in a British sense, Yard or Smith? I don't want to say Yard. Yeah, it's just a fight, a fighter that was said to me since, since I turned pro. I, I never get. I, not a day goes by where no one's saying, oh yeah, when are you fighting Yard? When's that fight happening? So um, I'll say Yard, yeah. Does that agitate you at all? No, it's just like, okay, I'm glad the interest is there. Let the fight happen. So it's, it's not irritating or anything. It's just like, ah, oh, I see what you're saying. You're always asking. One day, let's hope it does happen. Sooner rather than later, though. So we know what boxing is like, and there's a number of fights we don't get to see. But for you, in your own mind, do you believe you will cross paths with him at some point? I'd like to think so, but again, you can't, just because you want to fight someone doesn't mean they want to fight you or that the fight is going to happen. So hopefully it does happen. So young Anthony, he's getting ready to face Arturo Baturbi of next year. How do you rate his chances against a man who many see as kind of the killer in the division? I think he's got a chance. Yard can punch as well. So, and not even just that. It's two hands, two legs, we're in the ring. So once you're in and the bell goes, fight or flight, make sure you fight, make sure you win the fight. So I think, um, yeah, I think Yard's got a chance. More, more. I think he's got more of a chance than people are actually thinking or giving him. And that's just my opinion. Just one final thing on yourself, Josh, before we move on. He's, some people kind of feel that maybe you haven't been as active as what you could have been over the last few years. Do you echo those calls? Are you frustrated you haven't been able to get out more? You've only fought once this year, for example. I mean, I think it's definitely frustrating to not be as active as you want to be or, or as active as you can. So that's no lie that it's it's a bit frustrating, yeah. It's not it's not to sit down and say, oh, you know what, yeah, it's cool I've been inactive, X, Y, and Z. No, it's very frustrating not to have had purse bids won for certain fights to, you know, put in an exemption and that being declined by the WBA. Definitely, of course, it's frustrating because I'm sitting there thinking, all right, cool, maybe I'm going to get this fight. So let's wait and see. And it's like, ah. Oh, didn't happen or oh didn't win the purse with so def definitely it's frustrating what did you make around that with John Pascal not getting back to you guys on the VADA testing that's rubbish if you failed a lot of tests and you've been known for cheating put VADA in the contract don't say on email oh yeah we're going to sign up or we're going to do it put it in the contract as we've seen VADA is catching people up all the other doping people and agencies they're great cool but it's like VAD is the one that's catching people so put it in let's have a, a fair playing field and let, let's rock do you know what I mean so saying it on email and not putting it in a contract ridiculous uh, Josh just moving away from himself one other top of to touch on he's a fellow 258 fighter in Derek Chisora he's going to face Tyson Fury December 3rd a fight which was met with negative reaction but how do you rate Derek's chances in that fight um, I rate Chisora because he's always in there. there. There's something that... I've I, I, I spoken to him a few times about this. I talked to Derek about a few times and I'm like, there's something about him. Um, and again, I think in this last fight against Pula, entertaining fight, I'm trying to think where I was. I was at a, at a barbecue watching that, but everyone came to see it. I didn't say, guys, I'm watching what's this, so come and watch it. No, it drew everyone. And I was asking my boys, like, how come you don't want to see this? They're like, oh, it's Chisora. Chisora's always in a good fight. Do you know what I mean? So he'll bring the entertainment. He's always in a good fight. Um, for me, he's well received by the public. When he's walking in, there's people are screaming, going mad. You know what I mean? Because you know Chisora's going to bring it. He's not going to go in there and try and fence around. No, he's going to try and give you a hard time. Right, Josh, we will leave that there now because I know the Wayne has just started, so I'm sure you want to go and watch some of your guys. So thanks for speaking to me in ID Boxing. No worries, thank you very much. And um, yeah, let's see what happens on Saturday night.